<laughs> now, say hello to our friend Paul Schaefer. He's right over there. Hi, Paul. Good, nice to see you. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Paul, nice Thank to see you. Of course, Will. Antoine, how are you? You know, thank you. You know, David, I am especially excited about this particular new year. Excuse me, Paul, before you do that, I'm splashing on a little Tariq Aziz. <laughs> Very nice. What is the aroma of that, exactly? All right, go ahead. Well, this is a year that excites me to no end because this year has a very unusual characteristic. And what would that be, Paul? That is that this year is a palindrome. And uh, I have it right here. As you yeah, can see, right. it reads the same forwards yeah. as it does backwards. That's the definition of a palindrome. Wow, nice going, Paul. And you know, Good this eye. hasn't happened in 110 years, yeah. Dave. Not since... When was the last Well, one? not since 1881. As you can see, I have 1881 yeah, right here. There, yeah. And before wow, that, great. oh, I don't know when was the last Thank time. Thank you very I much, Paul. 1771, I yeah, have it right here. Yeah, okay. Before that, you guessed it, it was 16, 1661. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Of course, the crazy thing was that before that, it hadn't happened in, oh, over 100 years. Yeah. 1551 was the, okay. before that. How many cards you, were printed up, Paul? Yeah, 1441. 14. Okay, fine. You All know right. what comes after Paul. that? Yeah? You know, the next time it'll happen, I have it right down here. 2,000. Oh, good. We'll, we'll look for that. That's crazy. Yeah, there okay. You go. <laughs> yeah, did I okay. mention, uh, did I mention? Yeah, third, okay. Uh, uh. All right. Now, Paul, do we have some dialing music? Yeah, before that. Oh. 1221. <laughs> what, was, what was that in the hall? Somebody dropping, somebody's making soup in the hall. Okay, here we go. We're calling Hal. Turn on the external camera. There it is. We're going to call over there to uh, Meg Parsant. She uh, works across the street at the uh, Simon & Schuster building. Sure, we'll do that. Let's see, do I have that number here? I have it right here. Okay, this should be Meg. How can we see Meg, please? Then dial your operator. Okay, everybody in the control room screaming, hang up and dial again. Okay, here we go. There's Meg. We'll call over there to Meg. Works for a book publishing company. She publishes books. And, uh... There she's reaching for the phone. Hi, Hello, Meg. Publicity? Hi. Hi, Meg. It's Dave. How are you? Hi. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. How you been? I'm fine. Yeah, everything okay? Yeah. Yeah, good. Nice to see you. You, you don't sound so great. Who, who, who is that guy that just walked down the hall there? That was John from my department. John, put down the phone and scream John as loudly as you can. As lovely? Yeah. As loudly. As loudly. And, of course, as lovely as you can, too. John? Meg. John? Try, try this, Meg. John, get in here, you little cross-eyed weasel. Try that. Well, he's not cross-eyed. Try here. that. Well, I, I, I called his name, and now he's saying what? Oh, well, just get him in here. Please come back. Hurry up. Please refuse. Come back. Meg, you're going to have to learn how to push these people around. I'm being very, very uh, demanding right now. All right, tell him, to back. Stand, tell him to stand right there until we're done with him. He's it. right here. All right, tell him to stand right there until we're... Don't sit down, John. He, he's more comfortable sitting down. All right. Listen, Meg, how was your New Year's? It was very nice. Uh, did you enjoy a whole host of bowl games? A whole... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which one did you watch? Actually, I didn't watch any that weekend. I watched them this past weekend. Yeah, oh, the big playoff games. Yeah, now, the Who the hell part. is this? What? Who, who the hell is this? this who is, is this right there? What's her name? Kristen. Oh, I tell Kristen I said hello. David Lerman says hi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. She, she nearly died, didn't she? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so, and everything's good? You had a nice celebration, a nice quiet New Year's? Well, it was nice. I saw fireworks. There were fireworks over the Hudson River. Oh, yeah, and they, they have them in Central Park, too. It's very nice, isn't it? Oh, I didn't, I didn't see them. Well, what, the do the what do these people want? What do these people want? Tell, tell her to go somewhere else and fix her hair. Oh, no, and yet we got another guy. Doesn't anything go on over there? There's no... Who's this guy? Bring him in here. This is, this is Will. Will, come, right, Will, on, come on, in. on in. Yeah. They seem to think that you wanted them here. I know, I didn't want to. I just, uh, I'll tell you what, the guy sitting down, I'll give him... Oh, man. <laughs> Somebody's phoning in a bomb threat, apparently. Uh, now, listen, uh, Meg, I'll give that guy 50 bucks if he takes off his shirt. You'll give John $50? No, no, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> But from what I hear of things at the office, he'd do it in a second. I'm sorry? Meg, uh, you know you have lovely Excuse hair, by the way. I guess I mention that every time we chat, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Look at this, people. It's like, <laughs> it's like we're in an ant farm. Thank you very much.
Well, it's just staring a novelty, at us. You know. uh, uh, and and you like me pretty well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm crazy about you. You know that. Well, thanks. Well, I mean, I'm I'm really crazy about you. Well, really, thanks. Uh, okay. How's your boyfriend? He's doing very okay. well. Listen, can we paint your office? I think that probably wouldn't be such a good idea. How come? Um, because I don't think it's really my property to have painted. Well, what difference does that make? This is New York. That's true, but I don't really know if that would be a great idea. Now, people are always painting things that don't belong to them. I know, but don't do we want to become part of that group? Oh, man, alive. <laughs> Good point. Good point, Meg. A point well taken. Can we get some more people in here, please? Do you want me to get more people in here? Oh, that's, that's what's her name? That's Tara, isn't it? No, that? that's Mona. Mona. Hi, right? Mona. And, Say and hello to Mona. Hi, and there's Lori. Yeah. And, uh... Oh, yeah, you're right. There's Tara. Th this really is your busy time of year, isn't it? Actually, it is. All right, do you, want to, do you want us to paint your office or not? I think I'd rather not. Okay, Meg, thank you very much. Here's what I'm going to do. You put the phone down and think about it. You talk it over with your friends there. I, I don't think I should do it. Because we can, we can paint it for you in, in like 20 minutes. We'll have the office painted in a lovely shade of your choice. But you know what? I, even as much tell, as I'd like to do it... Tell that girl to mind her own business. I'm sorry? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, okay, but you, you, you think it over. We'll do something else and come back to you. All right, don't hang up. I'm going to put you on hold. Okay. All right, there you go. I asked you, you know, I asked you if you wanted to do that. Yes, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Here it is, the category tonight, top ten things overheard at the Baker Aziz meeting. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, Meg's making up her mind, and we'll do this, and then if she wants it painted, we'll paint it. Here we go. Uh, top ten things overheard at the Baker Aziz meeting. Uh, number ten. No, it's Garfield. He's very popular in our country. He'll stick right to your windshield. Uh, number nine. What the hell is Buddy Ryan doing here? Uh, number eight. So if we get out by Friday, we get the subscription to Sports Illustrated and the football phone. And the football phone. Uh, let's see. Number seven. Is somebody frying bologna? Uh, let's see. Number six. Is Saddam as funny in real life as he seems on TV? Number five. I'm sorry, Mr. Aziz. I can't explain Norm Crosby. Number four. Yahtzee. Number three. Are those, are those bugle boy jeans? Number two. Number two, cut the crap, camel boy, or the 101st Airborne drops down your chimney and feeds you your own socks. And the number one thing overheard at the Baker Aziz meeting in Geneva, Mr. Gotti says, get out of Kuwait now. So on the uh, program here, we have uh, Marv uh, Albert, Jacques Pepin, 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 huh? Pepin, yeah, he's uh, uh, one of the pet boys, one of the original pet boys, is, is Manny, Mo, Lou, and Jacques. And, all right, let's see if, uh, Hal, turn on that camera, let's see. If, hello, Meg. Hi. Hey, uh, oh, look at that brain trust. Now, what do you think, Meg? Can we paint the office? We'll get, we'll get painters in there. We'll put a big drop cloth over everything. Um, oh, it's a kitty. Someone has a kitty. Has a kitty? Yeah, oh, look, a little kitty, isn't that's, it? That's um, a little stuffed animal from my office. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So can we can can we paint the the daycare center or not? I don't think that would be such a great idea. All right. Thank you very much, Meg. Good night. Nice chatting with you. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay. All right. Take care. Give my best to those kids there. I sure will. Alrighty. Bye bye. Bye. There's uh, Meg. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll. Uh, We'll do a commercial. We'll be right back here, and uh, Marv Albert will begin the show. So come on back, folks.
I thought, I thought an emissary from the staff was going to talk her into letting us paint her office. What happened to Well, that? apparently an emissary from the staff did not talk her into letting us I paint see. the office. Well, you can't really blame her. Oh, you can't force in this day and age. It's the 90s. Hey, you know sake. it was a nutty year, though, really? Uh, this one. <laughs> Crazy. There's, there's another good idea. <laughs>
Uh, that's such a general question. Um, things have been fine. Look, Mark look, been busy. don't criticize the questions, all right? You just answer them. It was a very sincere question. I'm okay. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, Super Bowl, did we talk about the Super Bowl? No, did we didn't. Yeah, what did you think of that? Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I thought it was yeah. really exciting. Have you had any time off lately? No. Uh, how's your boyfriend, Tony? He's, he's doing just fine. Uh, everything good there? Yeah, everything's and, good. And your family? Family is wonderful. I sent a doll to my niece for Valentine's Day, and she loved it. That's very sweet. How, how old is your niece? She's four. Four years old. What kind of a doll was it? It was a little rag doll with a velvet, red velvet dress. That's very cute. I think she'd, she'd probably be thrilled to, with that. I hope so. Now, who are all those people loitering out there in the doorway? I have no idea. It looks like some sort of, it looks like one of those Dockers commercials. <laughs> Those idiots are walking around talking about being guys and how they enjoy their pants and that sort of thing. Oh, Docker. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. pants commercial. Uh, Meg, I understand you were at the big Christmas party. I'm sorry, the anniversary party. Oh, it was, yes. Yeah, and how long were you there? Um, for quite a while, actually. You know, I didn't get to see you. I'm sorry. What time did you arrive? I guess I arrived at about eight something. Yeah, that's when I arrived. I got there about eight o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I didn't see you. Did you make an effort to find me? I did see you, actually. You did see me? Yes. And did you come over and say hello? Well, you were surrounded well, by Well, thank colleagues. you very much, Meg. I, it's not that I didn't want to. Now, did you have a nice time at the party? I had a very good time. It weren't was a lot you, of fun. Weren't you impressed and at the same time troubled by what seemed to be an inordinate number of weasels at the party? <laughs> Can't say that I was. Oh, man. Do you have weasels in publishing? Oh, yeah, I think there are weasels everywhere. Well, that's the, you know, that's the sad truth. That's what the Bible tells us, Meg. Well, you know, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what sickened me about that party. It was the staff and the crew. That's fine. They're, they're great. And, and then plain loads of weasels. <laughs> I didn't meet any weasels. You had a good time? I had a very good time. Yeah, were you drunk? Um, maybe just a little. What, did you, what so. were you drinking, Meg? Uh, actually, I wasn't really drinking very much. Yeah, okay. Here, we have a picture of you at the party, and it's you and another woman. And, I, and I've been told that this is a friend of yours. Who, who is the friend, you know? Uh, Sally Hoffman, probably. Sally Hoffman? What does Sally do? She works in another part of Simon and Schuster. Yeah, well, it's clear to me from this photo that Sally is in the bag. <laughs> but I'm uh, so then, then I told my boss, I said, look, if I can't have Thursdays off, I'm not coming in. I've got to have a new schedule. <laughs> yeah. A lot of that all night. Uh, Meg, uh, I'm glad everything is good with you. I'm glad you were able to come to the party. I'm sorry I missed you. And yeah. you know, you mentioned it. You mentioned it that uh, in a couple of days it is Valentine's Day. That's true. And uh, if you don't mind, uh, because you've been such a wonderful friend and neighbor to us over the last year, I, I would like to send you my very special Valentine. And here tonight to deliver it to you is the man who most represents both romance and malt liquor, Mr. Billy D. Williams. <laughs> Okay, Meg, uh, I think you have to uh, give the phone there to Billy for the oh, presentation. Oh, I will. I'm yeah. going to put you on the phone okay. for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Undeniable. This is my new fragrance. Oh, some cologne. Yeah, hello. Yeah, very nice. And uh, this is a fragrance for women and a fragrance for men. Uh -huh. By, uh, exclusively from Avon. Well, then you know it must be very, very good. Ooh. What are Billy? Billy, uh, what else do you have for Meg over there? Oh, she's fanning herself. <laughs> what, what else do you have for her? What else do I have for her? That's well, I might have to. I might have to close this blind. In, in your in your dreams, you're closing that blind. Don't make me come over there. All right, but you have you have some flowers. You have flowers well, yeah, for her. I just and gave her the flowers, and I just gave her a, a, a Colt 45. Oh, the malt liquor there. <laughs> Undeniable. Okay, look, thanks, uh, Billy. You're going to be around over there for a while? For, for a couple of minutes. Okay, all right, we'll check back with you in a couple of minutes ourselves. we got other things to do. Hey, will you folks knock it off? I'm on the phone here. Man, alive. What bus did you come in on? Uh, all right, Meg, thank you very much. Don't hang up. We'll be with you, uh, I guess, in a minute. I guess in a minute.
Like, like boat in the blue, isn't it? Uh, what are we doing here, Morty? All right, uh, all right, we'll do a... Oh, damn, I just hung up on her. Quick, get her back. Can we get her back? Quick, get her back. Thank you very much. We'll do a commercial, and uh, I don't know what the hell we're doing, but we'll be right back. Take a shot of the window, Hal. See what's going on over there. Oh, well, look, look, look. They're becoming friends. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Is Meg still on the line here? Is this Meg right here? Hello, Meg. Hello. Meg, Meg it's me, Dave. Can Hi, you talk? Dave. Yes. How, how's everything going over there? Everything's just really wonderful. Are you enjoying some malt liquor? Well, I haven't really had any yet, but... Uh -huh. um, try it, try a little malt liquor. Yeah, a lovely toast. Very nice. <laughs> uh... <laughs> What, how does that stuff taste, Meg? It's really okay. I, you know, I never had this before. Re really okay c compared to what? What? <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing. All right, you kids have fun. Yeah. All right, we have to go. Okay. All right, I don't know what's going on here tonight. There. Now, let's, uh, let's do our top ten. The category tonight, top ten other nicknames for Lincoln. What do you today mean, what do you mean other Lincoln, nicknames? Today is President Lincoln's uh, birthday. Yes, it is. He would have been 182 years old today. 182 years old really? today. And we have uh, top ten other uh, nicknames uh, for Lincoln. Well, uh, nicknames that he had, Honest Abe. Right. Uh, old uh, Thrifty. <laughs> All right. Was it Old Thrifty? Whatever you no, say. The, the Great Emancipator. The Great Emancipator. The Rail Splitter. Mm -hmm. The uh, Super Chief. Here now we have other nicknames for President Lincoln. Did I mention Honest Abe? Yeah, uh, yes. Yes, you did. Yeah, well, that, that pretty much finishes the category. <laughs> Here we go now. There we go. <laughs> Top ten other nicknames for Lincoln. Did you folks get a chance to meet our announcer, Bill Wendell? Bill, come on out here and take a bow. Where Bill Wendell, right here. Here, just, no, this one will do. Right there. There he is. That's Bill. Okay. Thank you very much, Bill. All the furniture you want. A lot of furniture is subtly somehow going to become available. What are you saying? I don't know. I just know I got some kind of a memo saying furniture, furniture, furniture. <laughs> oh, are we a little late? How much? How late are we? Two minutes? All right. See, if we'd edit out these lulls, we'd be right on time. <laughs> <sighs> Top ten other nicknames for Lincoln. Here we go. I keep hearing my voice echoing around this room. It's a little off-putting. Here we go. Number 10, the abolitionist. Number 9, Vanilla Abe. You, you like this Vanilla Ice guy, by the way, Paul? Uh, vanilla Ice? Yeah. I think he's... Uh... Am I going to have to fight each and every one of you? I happen to be a big Ice fan, as a matter uh, Number of fact. 8, Town Car. Number 7, Mr. $5 Bill. Number 6, Grand Champion, four years running White House Slam Dunk Contest. Number 5, The Fonz. Number 4, Mary Todd's Old Man, Hippies Only. Number 3, Little Debbie. Number 2, Illinois Babe Magnet. Number 1, Abe. I think Billy is steamed. He would like to go home. <laughs> he doesn't know how to graciously excuse himself. Well, he and said leave. he had a few there, minutes there, to yeah, stick around. There he is. He says, oh, when the hell do I get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> is, is the phone dead? You know, yeah, I, I hate to think of uh, Meg full of that malt liquor, though. <laughs> I hate to think of me full of that malt liquor, come to think of it. <laughs> uh, Morty, is there some kind of WrestleMania show here tonight? Okay, fine. <laughs> Here, uh, let's tell you about the rest of tonight's program. Uh, we have Susanna Hoffs. Uh, Hoffs? Hoffs, thank you. 
Uh, formerly with the Bangles, is that right? Bangles. Yeah, okay. Should be out here playing with the band? Yes, indeed. A uh, high-spirited tune? She's great. Uh, a real hand clapper? It's a terrific well, song. We'll look forward to it. She's not wearing any underwear. Hey! <laughs> Just keep that in mind when she comes up. Uh, and also, uh, British actor, comedian Robbie Coltrane. Paul, underwear on this guy? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't explore that one, no, sir. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow. Hey, hey, tomorrow, as long as you're jotting this stuff down. Uh, tomorrow, well, the Blues Travelers will be here. Oh, they are a terrific new group. Yeah. New Tra group. Tracy Ullman will be here. She's a terrific, uh, And we have uh, dogs from the Westminster Kettle Club show. They will be fabulous. Yeah. Now, now, Morty, Morty, when we have these dogs on, people expect them to do something. Will they do something? They'd look great. They'd I know, I know, but, uh, Morty, that's why we have you. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, but are the dogs going to do something? They look great. They come out. They're award-winning That ain't enough. Dogs. I'm telling you right now, that ain't enough. We they'll do all... something. Huh? Yes, they'll do something. Oh, well, how about that? They'll be doing something. Oh, great. Let's see. Let's take a look and see if Billy D has uh, uh, split the gig yet. Hal, turn him on. <laughs> oh, man. This poor guy. He's thinking, yeah, I'll drop by. I'll do eight minutes, and then I'll be in a cab. I'll be downtown having dinner by the time the show hits. And there he is over there talking with Meg. All right, let's do a uh, commercial, and then we'll bring out uh, Susanna Hoffs. Yeah, right up there. All right, my thanks to uh, Robbie Coltrane, Susanna Hoffs, and Jane Pauley. Listen. Uh, when you're ever visiting the United States, please come by the show. Thank you. I'd love I to spend more time uh, chatting with you. And um, our thanks to Meg and uh, Billy D. Williams. You know, I, I read nine newspapers a day. Good God. Really? Oh, yeah, nine <laughs> newspapers every day. Well, cover cover. Oh, yeah, I'm a voracious so. reader. I, I'm kind of a news junkie. Yeah. Huh? All right, uh, that's the show for tonight. Good night, everybody. <laughs>
Nice to see you, Dwight. Uh, it looked like there for a second you weren't coming out. What, what's going on? How you doing? Why doesn't everybody just leave me alone? Yeah. Screw you, Letterman. Dwight the Trouble Team, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. That was Dwight the Trouble Team. This is going to be a running thing on yeah, the show yeah. now? Dwight is troubled because he looks like he's 28. That's what's troubling him. <laughs> That's the only thing troubling Dwight. He's 14 chronologically, but he looks like he's creeping up on middle age. That's Dwight's problem. That's why he's troubled. Paul, Paul, may I have from you some delightful dialing music? You know, I've forgotten who we're calling. Hal, oh, Hal. This is our uh, director, Hal Grinwald. Hal. Hal, turn on the external camera. This is Hal turning on the external camera. There, he is. there she is. That's Meg uh, Parson over at the Simon and Schuster building. Let's just look around over there. There's Meg right there. Has the best head of hair in all of publishing, don't you think, Paul? Working very, very hard. Mm -hmm. Woo! There you go, coach. Yeah, he's a beauty. Here we go. We're going to call Meg. Let's see. Uh... Okay. I'll come to your town. Guarantee one half inning, no hit baseball. No, shut out baseball. Or the tickets are on me. Look at how promptly she answers Hello, the phone. Publicity? Hello. Hello. Is Linda there? Could I speak to Linda? There is no Linda here. Uh, hello. Linda, is this you? No, this isn't Linda. Oh, she's doing a little character. <laughs> Hey, Meg, it's your friend Dave. I'm across the hall. How you doing? Okay. How you been? Fine. What's going on? The usual. Yeah, well, good. Turn around, turn around and wave to America. There you are. <laughs> hey, can we send Dwight the troubled teen over there? <laughs> send Dwight. Yeah, get Dwight on it. Hey, uh, Meg, uh, so how was your weekend? What have you been doing? Uh, it was really good. It was beautiful out. It so. was great weather out this weekend. What did you do? Um, well, I kind of had batting practice. Hey, what do you mean, batting practice? Well, not really. It's not like I'm on a team. I just, Tony and I went out and, you know, played catch. And, oh, that's nice. Where yeah. did you go? Out uh, on the park? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. It was, was really fun. Was it crowded there in the park? Not as much as I thought it would mm -hmm. be. It was nice. Were you and Tony roughed up? No. All right. Uh... <laughs> And, and Meg, are you, do you care about college basketball? I know you attended the Clark. Yeah. We had a good team. Oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah, those are, those are for me because I think we missed your... <laughs> yeah, gosh, I hope no one was injured. No, they're beautiful. Yeah, you know why you get those flowers, Meg, is because I think you had a birthday, didn't you? Oh, well, it's in May, but... Um... <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I was told earlier this afternoon she had a birthday last month. I said, oh, well, by all means, I'm embarrassed. We better send her flowers. Uh, so how old will you be on your birthday, Meg? Uh, I'll be 29. 29? That's a delightful age. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, uh, uh, we're, uh, we're sending a little friend over to say hello to you in a little while. Oh, my gosh. What's the matter? What happened? It's just, um, this is really overwhelming. Oh, there's you're getting, yeah, those are, those are probably for me as well. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Um, all right, now, uh, oh, no, this is not. Oh, hey! No! Oh, these guys couldn't, try to be a little clumsier, could you? Holy uh, Okay, I, I hope those have been sprayed. All right, listen, Meg. Yes? All right, we have things to do. I'm going to put you on hold. We'll check back with you a little later. Okay. All right, happy birthday, by the way. Well, thank you. Okay, bye. Be careful. Okay. Don't let those fall out the window. No. All right, put Meg on hold there, and we'll uh, check back in. I was told that we missed her birthday by a month. So we said, oh, well, for heaven's sakes, let's get some flowers over there. Well. It's not till May. <laughs> yeah, we did. We missed it by a couple yeah, of months. Well. Hey, Morty, let us know when uh, Dwight the Tub Troubled Teen arrives over there. All right. What now? What do we do in the meantime? Oh, we'll do a commercial. Oh, we got a good show. Phil Donahue is here, Hank Aaron, and Joel Ely. So come on back, kids. <laughs> Thank you very much.
for uh, joining us on the program. Henry Aaron is here, baseball's all-time leading yeah. home run hitter. Yeah, and yeah. how many did he hit lifetime, do you know? Uh, no, sir. 752. Is that right? 752? Uh, 755. Uh -huh. there you go. I was at Riverfront Stadium when he hit 714. No kidding, Yep, really? when he tied it. And yeah. then he went down to Atlanta and he broke it at 715, is that right? Yeah, close enough. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what else are we doing? Let's do our top ten list and then bring out the big guests. Oh, Hal, turn on that and let's see if she's uh, inundated with flowers yet. It's her birthday, you know. <laughs> there she is. Well, she looks beautiful among the uh, blooms, doesn't she? Very, very nice. The perfect camouflage activity for snipers. And is, is she, who's she talking to? Oh, hi. Okay. Hey, listen, Meg, I'm sorry. I thought it was your birthday. I'm sorry. Well, uh, they really... They're very beautiful. Are they still coming in? Um, I think we've pretty much stopped. There's well, nowhere uh, else to put them. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? We'll pass them out to the uh, boneheads in your office. We'll start shuffling them back out? Well, no, give them to people you like. Oh, I, mean, I will, you, you I will. You must have friends up there, right? Oh, yeah, a few. Are you well-liked? I hope so. Yeah, and do you have uh, largely a favorable opinion of your co-workers? Yes. All right, well, then pass out the flowers. I will. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll be talking with you. Can you hang around a little longer? Sure. Or you have to race home? No, no, I'll you be here. You know, the thing I like about you, Meg, you're not one of those nine-to-five guys. No, I'm not. It seems like you put in an honest day for, for your pay. Okay, that's true. Yeah. Are you happy with the salary you're making? It's all right. What? How, how, long, how long have you worked there, Meg? Um, over four years. Four years? Yeah. And when was the last raise you received? They're pretty good about giving raises. Yeah, when was the last one? I don't remember. I think maybe about half a year ago. Yeah, well, that's not so bad. And was it a real raise or was it one of those nonsense cost of living increases? It was okay. Yeah, pretty good raise? Yeah, yeah. I can't complain. Could, could I guess the salary you make or would that be... Uh, you might be able to, but I'm not going to tell you if you're right. Yeah. Uh, how much longer do you think you'd be working for Simon & Schuster? I don't know. I'm, I'm very happy here. Are you really? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I think, Meg, I think I could make you much happier. Well... What? Huh? Oh, the D Dwight the Trouble Teen. All right, let's see what Dwight looks like over there among the flowers. Dwight, where is Dwight? Uh, we're sending a friend over, Meg. Dwight the Trouble Yeah, he's 14 years old. There he is. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's, that's about all you get there, Meg. I'm sorry. Dwight? Uh, offer him some flowers and see if he goes away. Oh, All right, Meg, okay. we got work to do. Listen, nice, nice chatting with you, and uh, I'm sorry about your birthday. We'll, we'll send you a real gift on your actual birthday. Oh, well, I'm not complaining. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, listen, before you leave, uh, wave goodbye, uh, so we'll come back to you. Don't, you're not leaving now, right? No. Okay, hang on. Okay. Hey, Phil Donahue's here. Oh, okay. You like good. Phil, don't you? Sure. Yeah, okay, hang on. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> Dwight the troubled teen. <laughs> He's about to wreak havoc in the office there. <laughs> what are we doing now? Top 10. Here it is, the category tonight from the home office in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Top 10 pet peeves of guys who manage big and tall men's stores. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Al, can we see if... Um... Hello, Meg, are you there? Yeah. How's it going? It's going fine. Oh, that looks very nice. You've turned out some lights or something. Um... Or whatever. It looks good. We have some... Uh, it's a very nice effect. Yeah, yeah. it's looking pretty yeah, you ready to shove off now? Well, soon, yeah. Uh, how soon? Uh, within the next 15, 20 minutes. Oh, okay, all right. Well, well uh, let us know so we can say goodbye. Oh, okay. All right, bye. All right, hang on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, in this half hour, who do we have uh, coming up? We have uh, uh, Joe Ely yeah. and, uh, yeah, and uh, Henry Aaron. Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Meg, say goodnight to Hank Aaron. Oh, goodnight, Hank Aaron. All right, goodnight, goodnight. to you, Meg. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. explain that when you were knocking Canadian sense of humor, well, you weren't talking about me. No, 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 there's nothing wrong. Well, let me, let me just uh, go on record here saying there's nothing wrong with the Canadian national sense of humor. Thank you. We, Thank we you. just had a young man stand up and say, I have a joke, let me try it out, and it turned out that the joke... Guy uh, in the audience. Yeah, yeah, a guy in the audience, exactly. Probably during the warm-up. That's right, and, and it, was, it was, I guess it's a very funny joke, I just personally, I didn't get I it. See. 
<laughs> but I'm sure there's many things about our culture that the Canadians don't get. Don't get. That's true, there is. <laughs> I don't know what... I get everything done. You have a nice weekend. You know. I had a lovely weekend. How was your weekend? Had a sir? great weekend. You're not going to believe what happened this morning. Oh, I want to hear about it. Six o'clock, first light where I live. Six o'clock. All of a sudden, you know how when you're sound asleep, you're overwhelmed, you're consumed by the sense that there is the presence of something in the room with you that should not be there? <laughs> you're not going to say. You're not telling me. Well, no, wait. It, it, this gets even better. So I'm sound asleep and I jolt awake. I hear this noise. I hear that noise several times. Yeah. You want to hear it again? I look over on my pillow, standing on my pillow. Honest, I swear to goodness, is a three and a half. No, not a three and a half. It's a more like a two and a half foot. Guess what? Two and a half foot woodchuck? I don't know. A woodchuck? A woodchuck? Are you kidding me? What is you, it? You've heard woodchucks make that noise? I don't know, but I'm going nuts. Okay, what is, here we go. What here, is are the, here are the clues. We're, we're out of the city. We're not in the city. Right. It's two and a half, three and feet. feet. It's standing on my pillow, yeah. making this noise. Making noise. <laughs> what do you think? It's not a woodchuck. We know that. It's not a witch. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a, no, not a penguin, but very good guess, sir. <laughs> That's that right. Good? Somehow below the Arctic Circle, there... Is was it a an penguin. animal? Is it animal? Well, this man was on the right track. It's a, it's a uh, uh, bird. Some kind of... Two and a half, half An owl. owl. It was! It was an owl! Very good! Thank you. So you're saying, then, huh? that an Thank owl you. came into your bedroom? <laughs> what a show we have here, huh? An owl. Thank you, an owl. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. An owl came into your room? That's right. I left the door open because it's warm up there, and the owl came right in, and I jumped up shrieking oh. and running around like a maniac. The first thing I did, and this is a tip if this happens to you at home, I went downstairs to the uh, refrigerator, and I got a head of lettuce. Yeah. And I came up, and with the head of lettuce, yeah. I was able to get the owl out of my bedroom. <laughs> How did you ever think of that? I don't know. It just sometimes... In an emergency like that, some other sense Something kicks in. in. And... You lured the owl out with a head of with lettuce. With a head of lettuce, yes. Now, here's a tip. I, I tried it first with romaine. <laughs> it, yeah. Iceberg. With iceberg, yes. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, it's, I think it's the Ontario, Ontario Science Center. What did I say? The, the, the Canadian Hall, the of Hall of Science. Hall of Science, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, got a nice the, ring to it. Yeah, that's their arch enemy. You're right. <laughs> And, and a guy in the audience, Paul, look at this, look at this. As long as we're talking about that? things uh, horticultural, look at that, utter bomb. Oh, don't tell me what that's for. Well, no, I think, I think it's probably for, 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 uh, for, uh, for uh, cows. Cows, yeah. <laughs> in the winter to prevent utter chafing, oh, chafing man. of the udder. <laughs> I would guess. And then, and then, of course, they pass the savings on to you. Oh, man. Let's do a little dialing here. Let's do a little dialing. Paul, some dialing music. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I misdialed. A little misdialing music, Paul. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Hal, turn on the external camera, will you? Meg, Meg, yes. is that you? Yes. Meg, it's me, uh, your friend Dave Letterman across the street. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, how you been? Okay. Uh, wave to all of North America. <laughs> uh, what's new in your life? What'd you do this weekend? Um, well, my family got together out at our house in Southampton and we celebrated Mother's Day. Uh -huh. And as I recall from previous chats, that's always kind of a bloodbath, isn't it? A bloodbath? Oh, uh, a lot of bickering, a lot of swatting at one another and... Uh... Not really. If somebody gets into the Bloody Marys and all hell breaks loose? Well, not really. A, a lovely, a lovely festive occasion. It was lovely and festive, and yeah. my four-year-old niece tried teaching me how to do cartwheels, but I wasn't very good. Let, let's see what kind of progress you made, Meg. Go ahead. <laughs> try one. <clears throat> Go ahead and try one there on the desk. No, I didn't make any progress, so yeah. that's okay. Uh, tell people what it is you do for a living over there at uh, Briggs & Stratton or whatever the hell that company is. Well, it's the <clears throat> publicity department of pocketbooks. Pocket books, right. right? And I'm the publicity coordinator, mm -hmm. so I kind of do a little publicity, a little 
A little bit of everything. Yeah, and you're damn good at what you do. Believe me, I've heard nothing but wonderful things about the job you're doing. Oh, well, thanks. Meg, uh, what kind of money do they generate, those little pocketbooks? Uh... They, they do very well. Well, like what, uh, a million bucks a year, two million bucks a year, four million, a billion? Um, I don't really know, but they're the ones that most people can afford. So. Yeah, and, they, and these are the ones you go into a, a supermarket or a drugstore or some kind of shop, and you see them there in that spinning carousel with books, and it's usually a nurse in a ripped uniform with some kind of... <laughs> A gorilla with a dagger in its mouth is uh, menacing her, that kind of thing? Well, we, we do others besides those. Yeah, but those, 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 those are... Those sell well. Those are your favorites, aren't they? Well, they're not my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, Meg, uh, tell us a little bit about your... Uh, what do you do for fun? What, your hobbies, your likes, your dislikes? What, what kind of recreational things do you enjoy? Um, I like playing softball. softball. Hey, you know, we play is every day on uh, Friday in the park. You should come up. Yeah? Yeah, why don't you come up? Will you do that? Sure. All right, all right. It's every Friday. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. What else do you like doing? Um, oh, I used to enjoy horseback riding. I yeah. haven't done it for a while. How come you haven't done any horseback riding? Because it's sort of expensive in the city. And what's the biggest expense with uh, horseback riding? It, it wouldn't be utter balm, would it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Meg, uh, we, we, have, uh, we, uh, we have horses down there on the sidewalk for you. Oh, you do? Yeah, well, we thought maybe if you're interested, you'd go down there and take a ride. What do you mean? All right, all right, I'm going to try this one more time. I, I heard what you said. Yeah. Well, can, can you sneak out of work and, and go down there and ride a horse for us? I could sneak out of work, yes. Well, would you like to do this? Sure. All right, see if you can uh, look down and see the horses there. I'm not exactly in riding attire, but... Well, we, we'll get riding attire for you, don't worry. Um, I don't see any horses. Okay, well, hang on. Le can you lean out of the window there? I, I guess. I don't want to lean too far. Yeah, there they are, right there. There's a horse. Okay. Now, now, Meg, if, if you wanna if you wanna do this, we have everything you need. We have the the jodfers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, anything else there? And so you can. Where'd you go? Where's Meg? Wait um, a minute. Oh, there she is. Uh, and then you just run down and uh, le and they'll let us know when you're ready. You wanna do this or what? Sure. Well, that's a beautiful dress. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you're a beautiful woman. You, you know, you know, I think the world of you. Well, thank you. All right, we have to do a commercial, Meg. You uh, go down there and get on that horse. We'll see you in a minute. Okay. All right, bye bye. Okay, let's get her. In. We'll be right back after this word from Dr. Naylor's Utter Bomb. Do you have any idea what the red light means? Do you have just any idea whatsoever? Just the slightest little bit? Uh, let's see. Uh, on the program yet to come, Marshall Crenshaw and Carol Gold. Huh? What? No. No. Carol Gold. We're having a little time problem. You figure that out. <laughs> Uh, oh, let's go down and see if, uh, if our friend Meg is on the horse. Hal, turn on that camera. Oh, look at how beautiful it is. This has been one of our best springs ever, don't you think, Paul? Look at the green of those trees and, uh, what's that, uh, there, Meg is, oh, oh. There's, is that Meg? Oh, Meg can't hear me, can she? Okay. All right, there's Meg mounting up uh, a hurricane, Hal says. They got her in a, what, are, what is she wearing there? Is that it? Paul, can we have a little mounting music? Whoa! Okay. Here we go. All right, just down to Battery Park and back. Hi. All right, any second now. And they're in the gate. There they go. <laughs> no. This looks like some... Uh, excuse me, what? What was it? What caused that? Did they hit the applause sign? Did somebody hit the button? Did it come on in there? Yeah. Pete, excuse me, did you turn on the applause sign? Yeah, 
Sorry, you, you don't apologize to me, Pete. Apologize to the American viewing audience. Sorry. All right, thank you, Pete. I appreciate it. You're behaving like a man. All right, there goes Meg. And now, they'll turn around. <laughs> it's, there's, there, oh, I see. There's gridlock. What a, Let's, uh, maybe we can buy him some dogs, feed uh, some hot dogs to the horses there to me. Meg really looks like she's having the time of her life, doesn't she? Okay, there we go. Okay, yes, yes, sir. Oh, that's, that's really what makes the hayride for my money. <laughs> wow, is this stupid. All right, well... What are we doing? All right, we'll do a commercial. We'll be back here with Marshall Crenshaw. Thank you. You're listening to K Light 101 FM. A Holly Ridge string. He hates that song. Cast your fate to the wind. Uh, Marshall, good to see you. Good luck with the album. My thanks to uh, everybody who was uh, here on tonight's program. Oh, Carol Gold uh, uh, will be on tomorrow. Or, or maybe you can see her on Bob Costas immediately following this show. Good night, everybody. I got great news today. What's that? All this time, I was afraid that my house had been built on a pocket of methane. Uh -huh. <laughs> ah! the, old, the old switcheroo. I'm telling you, there's comedy everywhere I in this room today. I, yeah. I switched. Now, do you understand it. about that joke? See, it's my own dumb fault because uh, they joined the National League and the Cleveland Indians are an American League uh, team. Ah. Uh, I'll see. But it, uh, I think the people in here. I'm going to do for you an impression. Okay. <laughs> This is an impression of the most annoying person I encountered this weekend. Okay. Turned out that it was a woman. Uh-huh. Uh, looked, looked like uh, Marlo Thomas in That Girl, but, but about 68. <laughs> it, it could be Marlo Thomas, come to think of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you just get in a cab? <laughs> Okay, so now the setting is, and she's got, uh, uh, what do you call those, uh, sunglasses? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so sometimes these exotic terms escape yes. me. Uh -huh. uh, sunglasses, uh, earrings, and some uh, bracelets. <clears throat> the most annoying person I encountered over the weekend. <clears throat> Here's what she said. I hope I can do this right. <clears throat> Look, Avery, Wolfgang Puck frozen pizzas. <laughs> Her husband was Avery then? Yeah. We don't know that they were man and wife, but there was an Avery. There was an Avery involved. Yeah, and then what followed was a uh, discussion. Avery didn't know whether you could microwave them or not. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and she didn't know whether you could microwave them or not either. She'd had them on the, the MGM Grand Flight one time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, Avery, Wolfgang Puck frozen pizzas. <laughs> hey. Paul, how about a little dialing music? Did you folks go to the big parade yesterday in uh, downtown? Uh, that was certainly something, wasn't it? Hey, I'm concentrating here. I'm trying to get this uh, phone dialed properly. 
Okay, there we go. Hal, turn on the external camera. That's our director, Hal Brunman. Uh, Hal Munman. Gurney. Gurney. Hal Gurney, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the show is in the able hands. Of, oh, hey, turn on the, up the, get the blinds. We can't, hello, hello. Can, Meg. Hey, it's me, Dave. We can't, oh, there you are. Hi, we couldn't see you for the uh, blinds. Wow, do you look great. Oh, thanks. Yeah, what, do you have a little sun there or something? Yeah. Huh? I yeah. went to the beach. Yeah, what beach did you go to? Um, I went down to the Jersey Shore. Yeah, is it nice down there? Yeah, it's really nice. It's fun. What do you do down there? Well, I played ski ball for the first time. Oh, man, you're living a dream. I really, you know, it's great. <laughs> and miniature golf. And miniature golf, yeah. And, um, you know, that kind of thing. It was very fun. And were you down there with, uh, of course, your good uh, friend, your boyfriend, uh, Tony? Actually, I wasn't. I was with a female friend of mine. Uh huh. What? Uh, Tony couldn't get away for the weekend, or well, he went up to visit his mom, so I went to the Jersey Shore. Meg, don't what? even tell me you and Tony are having trouble. I don't want to hear it. Well, we're not. You're not having trouble? No. Everything is fine. Yeah. Hey, Meg, did we miss one of your birthdays? Yeah. Yeah. When was that? Uh, May, end of May, May twenty seventh. You know, my my sister has a birthday May twenty fifth. How oh, about really? that? Really? That's yeah, pretty yeah. neat. How How old are you? Uh, I turned twenty nine. Oh, that's pretty good. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Many happy returns. Thanks. You look, you look great. Now, does the sun do something to your hair there? It's beautiful. I, I, I guess it lightens it a little. Yeah, maybe. well, it, it works. Whatever you're doing that day. <laughs> Let me just tell you something. That Tony, you know, you could do a lot better than Tony. But... I'm pretty happy with him. Uh, now, Meg, uh, did you get downtown to see the big parade yesterday? No, I didn't. How come? Uh, I guess I was working. And, yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Wow, wait a minute, Meg. <laughs> Hold it. Holy cow, wait. No. Yow, oh, what? Meg, I'll be right over. What? Uh, who, who's, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, who is that out there? Um, Kristen and Lori. Yeah, all right, well, no, thank you very much. You're, you're standing exactly in the right place. I didn't mean to block your view. You know, there aren't many benefits to doing this job, and you just fouled one up, right? <laughs> Okay, now, now, uh, Meg, uh, I know in the past we've had some trouble there with the, you getting your window open. Can you, did they painted it closed or something? Can you get that thing open or I not? I have tried. I'll try now. Yeah, give it a try. Don't, uh, for heaven's sakes, don't hurt yourself. Okay. All right, be very careful and don't, yeah, don't knock stuff out there. Right. How's the publishing business, by the way? It's going okay. In yeah. spite of, um, the economy, it's going fine. All right. Okay. You know, we're in a recession. What? Uh, we're, we're in a recession. You're right. We are. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Yeah. Um... Hang on, I have to put the phone down. Okay, here we go. She's really getting into it. Anton, how about a drum roll here? <laughs> oh, very nice. Oh, so fun. Uh, Meg, now, do you have some toilet paper or something you can throw out the window there and we can have her... <laughs> we can have our own little uh, celebration for the returning men and women from the Persian Gulf War. No. Do you I, have anything I, you can heave out of there? Um... I emptied my hole puncher. I have some... Yeah, some we'll see. Let's see. Is there somebody over there from our staff? Ask out in the hall if somebody brought over some toilet paper for this. Go ahead and put the phone I down. Can toilet paper, please? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I had a nickel for every time I've heard that in our office. I'd be a, I'd be a wealthy damn man at this point. Okay, all right, now, here. Meg, put, put down the phone, and yeah. before you do that, we're just going to kind of recreate the big ticker tape parade yesterday. And the, the object is, is to just see how far down you can get it with, without breaking the paper. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, so I should hold on to one end and just let it go. Yeah, we'll just try one, and we'll see what happens. you got a pretty good supply. Here we go, boys. we got some music here, Meg. Good luck to you. Not bad. Meg, can you, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Try a couple of more here. Okay, okay, okay. We'll, we'll clean this up. Don't worry. I now, feel now really the object bad is to try and get it all the way to the street without busting it. All right. All right. This isn't exactly heavy duty stuff. Okay, nice going, Meg. I think we'll probably start bringing planes down now. Right. Uh, great job. You got to run home now? Uh, no, not really. Okay, well, we may come back and you can dump some more of that down there. Okay. But then you have to pick it up, okay? Great. All right, Meg, nice chatting with okay. you. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Meg Parsons across the street there. I don't know. Cool, cool.
to ask you a question, Paul. Who has more fun on their little TV clubhouse than we do here every night? No one, Dave. Exactly. No one but us. Uh, we're going to do a commercial. When we return, uh, you'll get to meet and chat with Anthony Quinn. So come on back if you can. <laughs> For after the show. Yeah. What do you want to do? Well, hear? either everybody, either you come up to my suite and then we invite everybody up, or, or I'll Wayne. come up to your suite and we'll invite everybody up there. Paul is referring to our appearance by uh, Wayne Newton, a Friday night show. Yeah, that was it. And we were talking to Wayne about what when he and Elvis would uh, go into Las Vegas together, what and I had visions of it being like a 48-hour, just orgy and fist fight. Yeah. That's that was in my mind, and that's what Wayne said. Uh, sometimes they'd go up to Elvis's suite. suite. Sometimes they'd go up to Wayne's suite. And invite everybody up. Yeah, every, the and then all the kids would come up yeah, to the suite. Yeah. yeah, so that's the kind of a swinging yeah. kind of a Vegas lifestyle I'm trying to cultivate for myself. But you know, you can still smell Wayne's cologne. <laughs> that's right. I know. Yeah, I know. So it's, a, it's a nice uh, aroma, a nice I scent. I noticed it too. But he was here Friday. Today yeah. is Tuesday. Still There's smell. still a hint of it in the yeah. air. It but it's good. I'm not meaning that it's... I mean, that's, that's, that's expensive cologne if yeah, it'll stay that lingers. long. When an aroma lingers... Exactly. It's important. Yeah. Yeah, now we had those kids on Friday also, and I think I uh, mentioned uh, Springfield, Illinois, as being the birthplace of Lincoln. I don't think that's right, is it? Oh, I don't know. Where, did, where was Lincoln born? Was he born in Springfield? I thought he was born in Kentucky. Moved to Springfield. When he was two, lived in Indiana. I know, I know, it means... I know to you folks at home it means nothing, and, and I... I apologize. Oh, tepid coffee. Mm. Tepid coffee. Uh-oh, somebody's gonna get fired. Well, can we, can we find out where Lincoln was born, for heaven's sakes? Was it Springfield? We're checking on that. We it was Springfield? It Springfield yeah. No, it wasn't Springfield. It was in Kentucky, and then they moved. Yes, he was born in Kentucky, and his, his father was transferred. <laughs> Worked for GE. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dialing music, Paul. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul. We're calling across the street. This will be the uh, lovely, uh, delightful Meg Parsant over there at the... Uh, Simon and Schuster uh, building. Over those, over those blinds. Hello. Hey, Meg, how are you? It's um, me, Dave. Hi. Hi. What's going on with the lights in there? Why? Why? Well, it, it, it was uh, really bright lights, and then now it's kind of dimmer than it was. I don't know. Well, maybe it's our camera. I goofy. think it might be. How are you, Meg? I'm fine. Nice to see you. Oh, thanks. What is that? Your lunch there in the window? My lunch? Yeah. No. What's What's in that bag there? That carton? That container? Where? Well, right there, right there. You see the big white thing? On my window? Yeah. I don't see any big... Oh, this? Yeah. That's my computer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Meg, how far are you see seated from the window there? Um, about three feet. And you didn't see that big white thing there? Well, I did, but I didn't know that's what you were referring to. Yeah, it could be time for the annual checkup, Meg. Oh, well, you might be right. Hey, how was your vacation? It was fantastic. Do you, do you like people who refer to it as Vaco? Uh, not particularly. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, a lot of guys here uh, like that. Hey, Vaco, got two weeks. Yeah, Vaco. Uh, and then they I... laugh real big and it's kind of... <laughs> uh, now, Meg, where did you go? I went to Maine. Oh, Maine is beautiful. Uh, it's the uh, Green Mountain State. No, it's the, uh, it's the Black Bear State. It's, no, it's the... What is it? What the hell is Maine? It's the... Uh, lobster State? The Lobster State, exactly. <laughs> right. What part of Maine? Um, Southern Maine. So, oh, Southern Maine. Far yeah. from Massachusetts, but it was right on the coast. Right on the coast. Really beautiful. Did you enjoy the rugged, rocky splendor of the coast of Maine? I did, yeah. as a matter of fact. Did you go with your friend, uh, your boyfriend, your Tony. boyfriend Tony? Yeah, I did. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. What did you guys do? Uh, uh, romantic walks on the beach? Um, we did that, and we attempted to swim in the very cold water. Hey, Meg, did you do any clamming? 
Well, uh, I would have if there had been a lot of clams. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't think you can eat shellfish now anyway. You get hepatitis. Oh, you yeah. might be right. Even up there, I guess so. Yeah. Hey, well, you saw this thing in, uh, in uh, People Magazine about you. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. What did you think of that? It was pretty exciting. Hey, what did you think of Delta Burke getting dumped? Oh, uh, I don't know. That Delta Burke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they dumped her. According to People Magazine, it says right here they dumped her. Yeah. All right, now here's, I'm going to show this picture. Do you mind if I show this picture on TV? I guess not. Yeah, it's a pretty nice photo, don't you think? Are you showing of Delta? No, no, of you. <laughs> oh, well, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's, okay. that's pretty cute, I think. Thanks. You're, you know, you're a lovely woman. Well, thank you. You have beautiful hair. Thanks. All right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, uh, anything else we should co uh, cover here? Uh... I don't know. You tell me. Um, can My you open vacation the... was fun. Uh, you want me to open the window? Can you open uh, the window? Sure. All right. Be careful. Okay. Now, for God's sakes, don't topple out of there, Meg. Yeah. I'll try not to. You better have somebody come in there and grab you by the ankles. Okay. Like that doesn't happen morning, noon, and night over there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. There okay. you go. Okay. Now, is there anything you can heave out there? Anything that I can heave out? Yeah. Um, You're on, the, like, the 14th floor? 13th floor. The 13th floor. Well, gee, I don't know. I did my uh, paper puncher already. Yeah. Uh, you got any athletic equipment up there? I have a baseball, but I'm not, I'm not throwing it out the window. Oh, please I... don't throw the baseball out the window, Meg. No, I wouldn't. Please don't even joke about the baseball <laughs> out the any, window. Any Nerf footballs Nerf, Nerf balls. Nerf balls. Meg, you said the magic word. I oh, did. my God. Nerf balls. <laughs> hey. Well, I guess we got some good stuff to yeah. throw out. You know, now those guys don't work with us. No? No. This is, this is pure coincidence. <laughs> All right, now, now Meg, yeah. uh, you, one of our stage managers, uh, Biff Henderson, may be down there on the street. Let's see if he's down there. Do you know Biff? I, I think you may have met. Yeah, yeah you I met Biff. Hey, now, Meg, do people recognize you? There's Biff. <laughs> Hi, Biff. <laughs> okay, you can see Biff, right? I can't. Uh, oh, you can't. Is he on your side or my side? He's on your side of the street. Uh huh. Okay, so now I'll tell you what. Maybe if you you put the phone down. Yeah. And and uh, just tip yourself out a little bit, not too far. Uh huh. And then try and try and get the ball to clear that little outset down there. All right. So you uh, don't want me to empty the whole thing at one no, time? No, 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 no. Okay. No, please, Meg. This is a game of skill. I don't know. That could be quite spectacular. Right? Yeah. Well, B Biff is down there. He's got a uh, one of those uh, laundry hampers. Ooh. Easy. Oh, my God. Hey, where was Lincoln born? I don't know. Well, it wasn't Springfield. What? It wasn't Springfield, Illinois. It wasn't? No, all right. Okay. All right, get ready to try and drop one down to Bill. Well, since I can't see where he is, I'll just drop it straight down? This will be a test ball. Okay. Anton, here okay. we go. Go ahead, Meg. Well, not... No? Okay. All right. All right, now... What should I do? Aim it further out? Yeah, you got to get a little, uh, a little, uh, push it out a little farther. Toss it out. It's got to have a little uh, trajectory, trajectory uh, on it. Trajectory. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, but be careful, for heaven's sakes. Don't. Maybe you put, put the phone down so you can really heave this one. Well, I can heave it. Uh, anyway, I'm not sticking my head out. Okay, but we need to clear that thing down there. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> That's yeah, Biff ought to be able to get that one. <laughs> You know, you know what we're looking at? We're looking at tomorrow's front page of the Post right here. <laughs> uh, TV right. stunt ends in disaster. All right, try one more, Meg. Here you go. Got to heave it out there. That, that looks good. It looks, it's, he could. Yes, yes! <laughs> Meg, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you actually, you got one in there, and uh, we're going we're gonna to do a commercial. Why okay. don't you just go ahead and dump the whole load now as we go to commercial? All right. All right, we'll talk to you later. Have a great summer, Meg. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, there you go. Let's see. Let's go. You're going to dump them all out of there? Yeah, here we go. Oh, this will be good.
<laughs> what, what the hell's going on out there? Uh, we'll, uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do a commercial. We're going to get Meg a really good attorney, and then we'll be right back. Robert <laughs> How long have we been working together now? Ten years. Ten years. I forgot your name. Forgot I started to introduce you as Bob someone. <laughs> Who would it have been? I don't know. My apologies. Bob Smith? Could have been. Yeah. Bob and Howdy. Could remember have been Buffalo Bob. Bob and Howdy? Yeah, I remember them, yeah, but that's not me. Now, I'm let me ask you a question. faithful have assistant you, and conductor. Have you... Do you know anything about this Geraldo Rivera book? I've been reading about it, yeah. It's a kiss-and-tell book. I yeah, see, I know nothing about this book. I haven't read it. I've been hearing uh, people talking about it, and I've been reading excerpts. And, and every little thing that I read and hear, it's very unpleasant, very unflattering. And I think to myself, this is odd. He wrote it himself. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you have to wonder, was he worried that no one would write an unflattering book about book him? About so he it. said, by God, I'll do it myself. He tells of all his, all his different exploits and names names and stuff. Bob, can I have a little dialing music, yeah. please? Yeah. <coughs> Hal, do me a favor, turn on the external camera. Ladies and gentlemen, Emmy Award winning director and uh, race car legend Hal Gurney in the booth tonight. There it is. We're looking across 49th Street at the, uh, what is that building? That's the, uh, the Penn and Teller building, the Simon, the Simon and Schuster building, and there's our friend Meg Parsant. We've known Meg for a couple of years. She works over there. What does she do? She's an editor or something? Publicity uh, chairman, uh, secretary, in charge of the publicity department. Turn it on again, Hal. She was receiving a delivery there, and a guy is leaving. All right, we're going to call Meg and uh, chat with Meg a little bit this evening before we begin the big program. Mm -hmm. She has beautiful hair, doesn't she, Bob? <laughs> Lovely hair. Yeah. Okay, there's the first ring. Bingo. Well, Hello. Hey, it? Meg. How you doing? It's me, Dave. Hi. Nice to see you. Turn around and wave to America there. <laughs> Meg, how have you been? I've been okay. What how... have you been doing? Uh, I don't know. I guess I took a little vacation. Yeah, I... did we talk to you since the vacation? I don't remember. Where'd you go? To Cape down, May. Oh, yeah, down to the shore. You were down there with friends, relatives? Uh, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Your, right. your boyfriend, fiancé, Tony? No, your, boyfriend. Boyfriend, Tony. Boyfriend. Yeah. And, you know, work and... Oh, that's right. You were in People yeah. Magazine and Tony was in the park sketching your, your likeness. Right. Right. Now, did, does Tony really do that? Yeah, he really does do that occasionally. Oh. So Tony really likes to make drawings of you in Central Tony Park? Tony likes to draw. Tony yeah. is an illustrator architect. And, and nice, nice things of you? Yeah, I think so. Anything good, if you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. Uh, Me Meg, uh, how you doing? I'm doing okay. I have allergies from this bad weather, but I'm okay. Yeah. What kind of allergies? Do you get I don't know. Just like head, sneezing head and up, all that. Sneezing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pollen. I guess. But be very careful. Be very careful. Don't get that Lyme disease. <laughs> I'll try not to. Examine yourself for deer ticks. Do you do that? Yeah. I actually had a Lyme disease test. Yeah, good for you. At the end of the day, and, and this is not just for Meg, at the end of the day, I would like everybody to take a couple of minutes to examine yourself for deer ticks. And that includes city dwellers? Huh? Does that include city dwellers? Everyone, because okay. it's, it's a very unpleasant ailment, and uh, those deer ticks are microscopic. Yes. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Meg, uh, uh, see if there's somebody out there in your outer office by the name of John Caruso and uh, Donna Gundal. Gundal. John Caruso. Yeah, just uh, scream out there and see if John and Donna are out there. There's someone named John and Donna. Are they out there? Oh, yes, here they come. Okay, they're coming on in. <laughs> all right, come on in. Oh, look, she's all... Hi. My goodness, she's certainly a lovely bride, isn't yes, she? Yes, she is. Now, uh, Meg, do you, I, I, guess, I, guess you know, I guess you know what we're Hi. going to do now, eh? I think you might pro 
do a wedding ceremony? That's right. Now, is, is there a judge out there as well? Yes, there is. She's All right, in my have office. the judge come in. She's here. Okay, where is she? Uh, she's right over here. That's Alice Schlesinger. Alice, where is... All we see is the bride. I'll take your word for it. There are two other people there. Okay, she's All right, now, over. Now, Meg, do me a favor. Go around the desk there mm -hmm. so we can have you in the shot. Well, there's... That would be John, I guess. Uh, go around that way? Can you go around that way? I guess so. Hang on, though. Yeah. Well, we have nothing but time. <laughs> is this okay? Yeah, we need to see you, though, in the window. Do you? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You should be on the bride's left. Oh, okay. Let me, uh... Why weren't you at the rehearsal dinner? I wasn't told about it. I don't know if this was well organized. All right. Now, don't... Try, try not to strangle anyone. With the... All right. Now, now, Meg, I'd like the judge to be on your left. On my left. Okay. That's right. There's so a you're, big you're... old chair here, but, um... Let's see, can you scoot on in here? Okay. You're supposed to be over here. How's uh, this? Okay. Is the blind in the way? Yeah, we can't see anybody. You're, you're going to... Everyone is going to have to move to their left a little bit. To the left? Yeah. All right, well, we can't really because there's a big item of furniture here which we're moving out of the way. Well, what is that, a chair? Yeah, it's well, like a get cozy Get the chair, chair out of it. This okay, is a once-in-a-lifetime kind of a thing, and you're telling me... Well, we accommodated you, and here we are. Is this okay? Okay, now we, we can't see the groom, really. Further over to the left? Yeah, a little bit more to the left. Okay. There you go. <laughs> it's just awful. All right, is there, uh, now the judge's name is Alice Schlesinger, yes. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, Meg, to yes. kind of hold the phone for Alice, okay. and then when she says uh, things, you pass the phone to the appropriate person, that would be the bride or the groom. Okay. All right, so you're, you're kind of the field coordinator for the wedding. Got it, okay. Okay, uh, all, right. all right, go ahead and let Alice begin. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pass you. Okay, now, here we go. Now she's giving them last-minute instructions. Okay. All right. Okay, John, are you ready? All right, could you take Donna's hand? Donna, maybe you should put down the bouquet. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Now, if you'll place the ring on Donna's hand, please. Now, John, do you take Donna to be your wife? Do you promise to be true to her in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health? Do you promise you will love her and honor her all the days of your life? I do. Now, Don, take John's hand and place the ring on his finger. That's fine. Now, Donna, do you take John to be your husband? Do you promise to be true to him in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health? And do you promise to love him and honor him all the days of your life? I do. Yes. That's fine. Now, by the power vested in me, by the state of New York, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Well, that's right. have a little reception over there in your office oh, if you don't mind. Not at all. Very nice job, by the way. We'll check back with you a little bit later. Okay. All right, thanks, Meg. Okay. Hang on. Okay, all right. I'll tell you what, let's do a commercial, and uh, then we'll be right back with Regis Philbin. Say la vie, say the old folks. Exactly. It's Hello, Meg. Wedding. Hi, it's me. Uh, uh, how's the reception going? Well, it's going okay. We're just starting to get the champagne let, going. Let me talk to, uh, <laughs> let me talk to uh, Donna. First. Okay, hang All on right. a sec. Where's the judge, by the way? The judge is right over here. A ask her if she can take care of a ticket for me. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Donna. Hello. Uh, congratulations. This is Dave. Thank you, Dave. Is this the happiest day of your life? It's Best. Well, you're a lovely bride. Right, Congratulations. May I speak to your husband, please? You sure can. Hold on. All right. 
Hello, John. Hi, Dave. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, and what, what about a honeymoon? Is it, I guess, the mail room, huh? Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> enjoy yourself over there, and thank you very much for uh, letting us share this with you. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. We'll talk with you later. I'll give you back to Meg. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Now, Meg, Hi. how's the champagne? Is it any good, or is it just that uh, domestic stuff you get on airplanes? Well, it's pretty good. It's Corbell. Uh, oh, well. Not bad. So, say no more. <laughs> Actually, that might... Well, anyway. All right, okay. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Uh, I about to say something nasty about the champagne. Okay. <laughs> now, that's Freebird. That's Freebird. <laughs> I want to tell you, the wedding was the most touching thing I have ever seen on television. <laughs> it was very nice, Where are they it? having their honeymoon? On Her Geraldo show? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now, you know, Regis, you've had uh, weddings on your show, haven't you? That's right. We did that a long time. But we had a regular wedding. We popped for flowers. We did the whole thing. We had flowers we over there. We through somebody's Venetian blinds. No. <laughs> we, had, we had flowers as well. Did you? How's it going over there? Very well. Anybody loaded? Not yet. We're working on it. How, how's the judge doing? The judge is um, staying sober. Keep your eye sober. on her. She got those robes on. She could be stealing you blind. Oh no, she's very responsible. Hey, hey Meg, hang on. I, I got somebody here. I want to talk to you. Okay. All right. And uh, you try and guess who this guy is. Okay. That's hello. Hi, Meg. How you doing over there? I'm fine. How are you? Good. I'm coming over to join the party in a few minutes. So are save you really? one of those three bottles for me. Hey, well, we've left some. We've uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. You know who this is? I imagine it's Regis Philbin. Very good, Meg. Very good. All right. All right, thanks, Meg. Okay. Okay, keep, keep that window locked. We don't want anybody tumbling out. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Are you going yeah, over to the wedding after the there. show? That Meg is a lovely woman. We've known yeah. her for a couple of years, and we just found her across the street working like that. One day you just looked Solid. at her? Solid. Yes. Solid. Now, there, to me, is Miss America. There's your Miss America right You're on probably there. right. Sure. <laughs> She's still on the phone. Yeah. Why well, is we, she on the phone? Well, we got her on hold right here. Oh, you could talk to her anytime yeah, you want. Yeah, at a moment's notice, she knows it could be me. <laughs> is Meg the woman in your life? Meg uh, is one, one of the women in my life. No? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean, that's it? It's, a, it's a, like you've been delivering tables for the wedding. All right, that's it. Set them up. We're done. Uh, Saturday night, we'll be watching the 71st Miss America pageant with uh, Regis and his friend Kathy Lee uh, uh, Gifford. Good to see you. Okay. And have fun over there at the reception. All right. I'm going over there right now. Okay. okay. Regis Stillman, kid. <laughs> Sander will be out here in a couple of minutes, and uh, we have the chef from the 21 Club. Oh, we had a lovely night at the 21 Club. Yes, yeah. you threw my bachelor That's party That's right, it was very nice, yes. very, and your father was there, and, and the band, a lot of fun. My People father... jumping out of cakes, remember that? That's right. Wow! That's right. And my father doesn't remember a thing about it. <laughs> it's just as well, don't you think? <laughs> Uh, anyway, the uh, chef from uh, the 21 Club, Michael Lomonaco, will uh, be out here in a couple of minutes. He's going to cook. Is that right, Morty? Okay. Do we have time to dial over there to see what, if Regis has arrived yet? All right. Tomorrow on the uh, program, uh, Per Ubu will be here. That's amazing. They know Per Ubu. Now, you promise now, you kids. <laughs> uh, uh, James E. Macy Sr. Yeah. Massey. Massey. And uh, Sean Penn, that'll be tomorrow. <laughs> All right, let's see if uh, Regis is over there. Is he over there yet? I have, he's not here yet. Hey, Meg, what's going on? Are people getting kind of bored and tired with this whole thing? Well, we've been giving them wedding presents. Yeah, who, what kind of presents are you giving them? We gave them Dr. Spock's Baby and Child Care. Very good. Very Star thoughtful. Trek books. Uh -huh. We gave them um, Betty Crocker cooking. Very, very thoughtful. Very, very important. Very thing. practical. Yes. Uh, you know, we got, we got a book coming out in a couple of weeks, don't we? We got another one of those top ten books. Yes, you do. I think we're probably going to have to add that on, onto the pile. Yeah. All right. You know, that last thing, so, oh, is Re uh, Regis is coming in, so, you know, get ready for real fun now. Okay. <laughs> the party's just beginning. Is that, is that him? Okay, all right. We got business to do. We'll, uh, we'll come back to you when he gets here. Here he is. Okay, there he is. Oh, now, look at that. Look, he, he, that smile lights up any room. Oh, it does. All right, well, you're in good hands now, Meg. 
All right, Meg, we got to go. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, also on the uh, program tomorrow, oh, I told you who's on the program tomorrow. What are we doing exactly? Okay, we'll do a commercial. We'll be back with uh, Adam Sandler, ladies and gentlemen. Paul, come on over here and try this. Oh, yeah. Paul is uh, going to sample the uh, the hamburger. You know, we have newlyweds across the street. Good. Could you guys uh, cover a free meal for them? I, I think that uh, we, we, should, we could work on that. No, no, no. They're no, really newlyweds. Can you do it? Yes, we can do it. All right, great. We can do it. That's very kind of you. What do you think, Paul? This meat is not overhandled in the least. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, David. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? Nice I'm to see you. I'm just fine. Good. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thanks for being Every here. Thank you. Everything all right? Everything's fine. Good. Have you met Alan Schwartzberg? Alan, the nice to see you. Electronic percussion. How about it for Alan Schwartzberg joining us, contemporizing our sound this evening? What are these here? What are those? <laughs> now, uh, what did you say to him when you came out? I said, always a pleasure to have a friend visiting with the band. Really? <laughs> Whatever you said scared him to death. That's I just, all I know. I just walked up to him and I said, and this was, of course, only a joke. I grabbed him by the shoulders because he was busy drumming there. Yeah. I grabbed him by the shoulders and I was trying to get into one of his ears to I... whisper this because in his head was, well, show him what you were doing. <laughs> you were all over the place. Yeah, and see, it would. All right, right. now it's dangerous to want to whisper something to a drummer anyway. Uh, yeah. And I just whispered to him, I said, why don't you do us all a favor and beat it? Ah! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, now I can see why you scared him to yeah. death. Yeah, and, and now as I think about it, it's also a little joke about being a drummer. That's right. Oh, no. <laughs> Not much of a joke, but ladies and gentlemen, after all, isn't that why you watch this program night in and night out? I'm going to have a... You know, Paul, I learned something last week. Sir. Never underestimate the value of bubbles. Yeah. I think we're going to start every show with a little uh, bubble activity like here because it puts everyone in such a delightful... <laughs> There you go. Okay, so that'll be the uh, procedure now for the next couple of weeks. I'll turn on the bubble machine. That's when I have a lovely beverage and then makes everybody, everybody see, seems to feel so much better after we turn on the bubbles. I'm Except, feeling better already. Yeah. Let's see what we're doing on the big program. Is there anything to do tonight? No, it doesn't seem like there is much to do tonight. <laughs> Hal, do me a favor, turn on that external camera. This is Hal uh, Gurney. Emmy award-winning director and uh, racing legend, Hal Gurney. I was at the Austrian Grand Prix when Hal won his first race. And this is our friend Meg Parsant across the street there. That's, uh, that's uh, on the other side of 49th Street. Meg works at the, uh, what building is that in? She's in the Department of Pocketbooks, a division of Simon & Schuster uh, Polishing. I'm sorry, Simon & Schuster Publishing. <laughs> Paul, may we have a little dialing music, please? Call right over there, chat with Meg, see how she's doing, find out how her weekend was. Here we go. This should be uh, Meg Parsant, lovely woman. We've known her now for six, seven We're years. sorry. The number you have reached is not in the service. Wow. All number. right. All right. Let's see. I, I, think, I think I may have misdialed. Let's, let's, uh, all right. Get that dial tone. You know, this stuff is not as easy as it looks on TV. <laughs> a lot of people at home saying, I could be on that show and make all the calls you want. Well, yeah, just get here and try it with the lights and the uh, Wink Martindale staring at you and everything. 
Yeah. Okay, there, it's going through now. She leaps for the phone. Hello, Hello Meg, it's your friend Dave across Hi. the street. How are you? I'm okay. Wave to America, blow everyone a kiss, and uh, say hello there. I'll just wave. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, now, seriously, what would be so damn wrong if you just blew everybody a kiss Nothing. there? Nothing. I'm just not so good at doing that. It might not be as graceful as I'd want it to be. All right, well, here. Can you see me? Oh, you can't see me, no. can you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's what you do, Meg. You just like that. You didn't see that, did you? Now, try that, Meg. Try it again. We didn't see it. Now, see, that was beautiful. <laughs> Meg, how was, uh, how was your weekend? It was really fun. Yeah, what'd you do? I spent a lot of time with some old friends from high school. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. We had greasy Chinese food, which was okay. Yeah. Went to a flea market. It was a lot where, of fun. Where, where was the flea market? Um, there's one on the Upper West Side. What kind of stuff did you get? Did you buy anything? Well, I didn't, but I haggled for a bracelet for a friend of mine. Very good. What'd you spend on it? It was originally 40 and we got it for 18. Hey, pretty good. Thanks. And and was it uh, some kind of metallic thing? Some yeah, kind of bead work? Some kind of leather deal? Well, we were told it was sterling silver. Oh, wow. And I believe it. Yeah. Uh, some weekend, why don't you drive up to my place? <laughs> I don't drive. <laughs> really? I grew up here. I don't Drive. You don't drive at all, man? Well, I know how. I don't have my license. Would, have you ever had an operator's license? No. All right. What, what, if, what if I were to send a car for you? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Man. Anyway. Uh, what, Meg? I didn't hear a word you were saying. I the didn't... audience was misbehaving themselves. That's why I didn't say anything. Yeah, I know. You don't ride either. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we have someone else's audience tonight. It happens it periodically. Like it. Uh, okay, Meg, uh, why the hell did I call? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I know. We wanted you to help us out with our big top ten list. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know that book that we published, that one book, it, was, it sold like 500,000 copies. Yeah, it did very well. Yeah, and we got another one out there, too. You do? Yeah, and we think it'll uh, do probably not as well as the first one. Well, I think it should do well. All right, the category, uh, Meg, is uh, top ten least popular craftsman tools. Uh-huh. That's the category. And all you have to do is, I think, stand up now. And can you raise your uh, Venetian blinds at all? Yeah. All right, raise them as high up as they'll go. Yeah, tuck your chair under the desk also. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Just like this were an air raid. Okay. Okay. Now what? Okay, you just stand there, and then I'll do everything. Okay. Okay, you just stand right there. Okay, here we go. The category is top ten least popular craftsman tools. Anton? All right, here we go. Number ten. Three-speed Q-tip, number nine. Exploding nails, number eight. Lee Cresson rivets, number seven. The toupee clamp, number six. The one-rung ladder, number five. Number five, the groin puller, number four. Uncontrollable chainsaws, number four. Okay. There it is, number three. Number three is the birth control nail apron. Number two, least popular craftsman tool, the imaginary hammer. And the number one least popular tool, the gas-powered clapper. There you go. here for a commercial. We'll begin the big program with Phil Hartman from Saturday Night Live. Come on back, kids.
welcome. Welcome back to the uh, program. We get a Hal, turn on that external camera again and let's look at Meg. Paul, we, we learned two things about our friend Meg tonight. One, she is, uh, I probably never done that, blowing anybody a kiss like that. Right. And two, she doesn't drive. Doesn't drive. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to believe it. Hal, I didn't get to see that, Hal. Thank you. And there they are. <laughs> and you know what she's saying to herself in her head right now, what she's saying over and over and over again? Please, God, make them leave. Please, God, make them leave. Please, God, make them leave. We're here. Bye. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. You know, it's a warm, Christmassy feeling look here at, Look at the, the decorations. We've decorated for the holidays. Isn't it beautiful? Just, Didn't they do a yeah. lovely job? We have wreaths. We have the uh, beautiful, old-fashioned uh, Christmas tree. I think it's, I think it's lovely. Puts me in the mind of Christmas. I'll tell you something, though. I'm going to be making a, a sacrifice this Christmas. What are, you, what are you doing? Well, similar to the way you have temporarily, it seems to me anyway, without any announcing or anything, retired the top ten list, at least temporarily. We don't know. We don't know if it's coming back. <laughs> it's mysterious. But I, inspired by that, yeah. I'm going to this year retire my share, does O oh Holy No, night. you're not. No, you're not. No. No, you can't. No, no. No, no. No, no. no. No, he's I don't know what to say. No, I was no, going to no. give it a rest, no, but no, it no, looks no, no. like wait, wait, the public yeah, won't let me. All right, all right here's, here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to yeah. tell a little holiday story. All right. After the little holiday story, then we would like you to do your... Tonight? You yes, want tonight. tonight. We would like it. Uh, just, I'm overwhelmed by this outpouring of emotion and support. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to come back and do it. This... I know Dave's home address. <laughs> Oh, very good. Thank you, sir. Now, please, please, sit down. Go back through the metal detector and please just sit down. <laughs> here's, here's, here's my little holiday story. Okay. Uh, up there in our office on the 14th floor, it's jam-packed with boxes and gifts and packages and things coming in, things going out. It, it's like an unclaimed freight depot. It's a veritable beehive of holiday activity. I noticed it. So we're, we're sending stuff out, uh, gifts, to various people that, that we know and uh, care about all over the country. And we ran out of the, the regular mailing kind of box. So the, the only box we could get there, they're like those things you get refrigerators in. They're, they're, they're the boxes we're mailing them in is about the size of this desk. <laughs> now, the gift itself is not that big. But this is what we have to send out in because that's the only box available. Huge so box. if you're on our gift list and you see this coming, you think, oh, geez, Dave has mailed us his desk. No, Sorry, that's... <laughs> <laughs> so the other boxes, the, the boxes that we want, finally came in today. And so a guy from Shipping and Receiving calls my assistant, Rose, and he says, uh, I got some boxes down here for you. I'm going to bring them right up. And she says, great, bring them right up. So the guy comes up and he's got a hand cart. You know, like you see with the two wheels, and you lean it like that, and you push it around. And there's maybe like three boxes on the hand cart. And now inside the boxes are other boxes. So it's just not that heavy. It's not like it's bulk lead we're dealing with here. So the guy says, where do you want this? See, it's the same guy who <laughs> actually turns out in the audience. That's how, that's <laughs> how he got guy. your address. Yeah, that's right, exactly. No, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the address. That's right. <laughs> so... The guy says, well, where do you want these? And Rose says, well, just bring them back down here. And you can tell, you can sense immediately that he's very tentative. Something is not quite right about this transaction. But he, okay, he pushes it down the hall to the office, and then he kind of levels off the cart, and he says, uh, could you, uh, get somebody else to unload these? I'm kind of tired. Ah. <laughs> this is what the guy says. He's an enormous guy. He's half my age. He's a young, strapping guy, but he's kind of tired. Okay. He wants somebody else to unload these three boxes off his little hand cart. My assistant, Rose, says, out of the way, sissy, and starts grabbing boxes and unloading them just like that. It was... Yes, it was... I, I'd have helped, of course, when I got that uh, neck thing. Yeah. <laughs> a little bone spur or something, I don't know. Uh, neck thing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a holiday tradition. He's done this for how many years, Paul? Oh, uh, since we went on the air. Exactly. Go ahead. Take it away, Paul. All right. Get ready is... for real holiday fun. Well, I don't know about that, but this is from Cher's Christmas special of, I would say, 16 years ago. She'd had a lot of fun. William Conrad was the, was the guest. They clowned around, but now it's time to get her serious, and she was going to do... 
under a beautiful uh, street lamp with the snow falling. Her version. She had a muff, as I recall. She was, uh, had her hands in a muff. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And a Victorian overcoat. <laughs> Audience making up their own shows. <laughs> And she sang, and it was very beautiful, and the piano played, do, 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 and she sang. Ooh, holy night, yeah. light so brightly shining on me all the night. Yeah. So, yet another year. I, I had popular demand. I have to bring it back. Very nice. Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> it, it ain't much of a tradition, but it's all we have. <laughs> Paul, will you do me a favor and give us a little holiday dialing music for me, please? All right, I'm going to be placing a call. Hal, Hal, if you will, turn on the external camera. Turn on that external holiday camera. Hal Gurney, <laughs> Emmy Award-winning director and racing legend, Hal Gurney. That's the, uh, the Briggs & Stratton building right across the uh, street. That's our friend Meg Parsant. I'm sorry? The Simon & Schuster building, Hello, forgive me. Publicity. Hello, Meg, it's me, Dave. Hi. How are you? I'm all right. You know, turn around and wave to everybody, but uh, hi, Meg, good hi. to have you with us. Um, from, this, from this shot, when we look in there over your shoulder into your office, your hair always looks beautiful. Well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, do you have any secrets? Because uh, it always looks so nice. Uh, I don't have secrets about my hair, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> do, you, do you use a, like a salon formula rinse or something? No. I use normal shampoo and conditioner. Do, do yourself a favor. Yes. Sal salon formula. <laughs> Meg, how the hell have you been? I've been fine. Uh, have you missed great. me? Well, yeah. Have you thought about me? Yes. In, in what sense exactly? <laughs> you, how are you? I'm, I'm just fine. Have you, uh, have you done any of your uh, Chris, uh, Christmas shopping? Yes, I've pretty much done all of it, actually. All right. wh where do you see the gift I sent you? It's enormous. It's like a refrigerator. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, boy, you look terrific. You look like you've been in the sun. Have you been on vacation or something, Meg? No, I've, I've been here. I haven't had a vacation in a while. Oh, well, bless your little heart. You know, if you came to work for me, I could change that. Well... <laughs> Every day would be a vacation, Meg. <laughs> Meg, how's that uh, book of ours doing, the old top ten book, too? Has that just fallen into oblivion? Well, no, I think it's a pretty good gift book, actually. Yeah, but is it selling? We doing any business with that I, thing? I think so. Yeah, well, do what you can to heat it up, okay? Yeah, okay. All right. Um, Meg, do you like uh, Christmas music? Yes, very much. All right. Uh, I'm going to put you on hold here for one second. Okay. All right. Now, Morty, uh, can, I, can I ask Hal to cue him in there? Sure. All right. Hey, Hal, do me a favor. Cue in the uh, Boys Choir of Harlem. Send sure. him in there to Meg's office. Okay. Okay, Meg, get ready for some uh, Christmas music fun. Are they? There we go. Yeah. Look at that. Thanks for chatting with us. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, well, that was pretty good. That was the Boys Choir of Harlem, ladies and gentlemen, across the street there with Meg. Uh, we'll do a commercial. We'll be right back here with the Daniel Stern. Very festive, don't you have a... Oh, thank you, Anton. Very good. That, that's, cr that's creative drumming. <laughs> uh, let's see. We want to thank the uh, Boys Choir of Harlem. 
Founded in 1968, founder and director is uh, Dr. Walter J. Turnbull. You know that man. I You've know him, yeah. I've worked with yep. him. He's great. Uh, 200 young men in the choir ranging in age from uh, 8 to 80. No, no, no. <laughs> 8 to 18. Uh, we, we had 23 of them over there in uh, Meg's office earlier today. And they will be performing at uh, Avery Fisher Hall on January 20th. I think the, there'll be all 200 of them there. And that sounded pretty good oh, when you man. think about it. It was only on the, on the phone. Over the phone, yeah. That's all that we heard. There was no microphone, no special acoustics. Yeah. Just all on the phone. Yeah. Honest television. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They're just... We're gonna, gonna go through the whole song, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty damn good for my money. I, I'm just dying to do it one more time. That's, that's, that's comedy.